morning, everyone, and welcome to worship for our second week in Advent. We're glad that you are worshiping with us this day. Today, we continue to make our way through our Advent series, considering today how the angel spoke to Joseph's confusion, as we'll hear the gospel story of how the an-, an angel of God appeared to Joseph in a dream and what his reaction was to that news that Mary would be with child. There aren't any new prayer requests to add this morning. However, we lift before God all of those known to each of us who are in need of prayer, confident that he hears those prayers of our hearts and that he hears the cries of those, um, even who we don't know, who are in need of prayers. As we do so, we continue to pray for those who are suffering the effects of COVID either now or as they are recovering and for all of the doctors and nurses and medical people who are working together to care for those who are in need in that way. We join in a time of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us come before the living God and confess our sin. Holy God, as we wait and watch for the promised day of salvation, we open our hearts to you. Search us and know us. Reveal all that we keep inside. To you, O God, we confess our sins, known and unknown. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us in your ways of justice and peace. Make us reflections of the radiant love of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven, and you are free. Free from all that holds you back, and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened by God's love, comforted by Christ's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. second week of Advent, we consider how the angel speaks to Joseph's confusion. This season of Advent confronts many of our emotions. Sometimes we are confused, unsure of what is happening in our lives. But the angel says, do not be afraid. The child is from the Holy Spirit. God is with us. The child shall be called Emmanuel. And we will all share tidings of comfort and joy. O God, who brings comfort and joy. When the world baffles us with conflicting messages and puzzling events, speak to our confusion. Comfort us with the knowledge that you are with us in times of clarity and times of confusion. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. O come, O wisdom from on high, embracing all things laid. strength and beauty come and stay. Teach us your will and guide our way. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel. 
Good morning. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 10. In today's reading, the prophet describes the ideal ruler who will come in the future as a green shoot springing from the dead stump, David's royal line, of Jesse, David's father. Gifted by the Spirit, the Messiah will seek justice for the poor, and the reign of his monarch will be experienced as paradise regained. The shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and the branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like an ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and, and the Weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of not the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the people. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. The word of God. The second reading comes from Psalms, chapter 80, verses 1 through 7 and 7 through 19. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock, shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the Syrian, in the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine upon us and we shall be saved, O Lord of hosts. How long will you anger, fume, when your people pray? <clears throat> you have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us a discern of our neighbors. And our enemies laugh, laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the one at your right hand, the one you have made so strong for yourself. And so we will never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord of God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. The word of God. Once upon a time, it was the second Sunday of Advent. Welcome to joining us for our children's message this morning. So, last week we started talking about how we were doing for Advent the tidings of comfort and joy. So, our theme for this week is confusion. Do you know what confusion means? Or maybe to be confused? Um, to like... You don't, you like get confused, confused means like you kind of, sometimes when I get confused, I get super duper frustrated. Yeah, and frustrating. Like you don't know what you're supposed to do, right? Yeah, like you don't know. So we're talking about confusion. So our gospel message today is about Joseph and how when he was engaged to be married to Mary, he finds out that she's pregnant. And she's pregnant with baby Jesus. Uh -huh. And he was all he was confused about the whole situation because he didn't know what to do. So he was sleeping one night and had a dream. And guess who came and talked to him in his dream? Who? 
An angel. Yes, an angel. You're right. So an angel was talking to Joseph in his dream and told him to not to not be afraid because Mary was had the baby of God. That's the baby she was having. Baby Jesus. Yeah, baby Jesus. And the angel even told him that they shall name him Emmanuel. Which we'll talk the about that baby? in a minute. Yeah, the baby. That's right. The so, baby Jesus. have you guys ever been confused before? Yes. Yeah, lots of times. Yeah, and you said, what did you say it was earlier? It's really... Um, you, it's really confusing and you can get mad. Yeah, it's frustrating, right? Being confused is frustrating. You don't like being confused. I don't like being confused either. So, but that happens. And we can get confused and we can be in the situations that we're, we're not sure what, that we know what to do. But just like we talked last week when we talked about fear and scary things, we know that God is with us, right? Yeah. And God will be there to help help us get through these scary or confusing times. And all we have to do is pray. And God always answers our prayers. Now, it might not be in the way that we want our prayer to be answered or the way that we think our prayer should be answered. But God answers it no matter what. Mm-hmm. Yep. Now, this year has been confusing, hasn't it? Not yet. Right? This year, 2020, with our COVID-19 pandemic, has been really confusing. Yeah. The rules seem to change. Our schedules changed. And it seems like kind of things are chaotic out in the world, don't they? Mm-hmm. It's kind of like um, now at my school, I, I leave at 12-something, and... I don't get to stay up till three something. Yeah, you leave the school earlier. So things are confusing. But we can remember that no matter what, no matter how confusing things seem to be, that God is with us. All we have to do is say, hey God, I need some help with this confusing thing going on in my life. And God is there with us. And when we said, we talked about Emmanuel earlier. So Emmanuel means God is with us. And in this really cool kids' Bible we have, there's this little part in here that says, to use rocks to write out the word of the name, Emmanuel, and to put it by your door. That way, anyone that sees it knows, can read it, Emmanuel, and that God is with us. So that'd be something cool. You could do rock, paint it on rocks, or maybe make a cool sign and hang it up in your house so that you can always remember that God is with us. All right, let's pray. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for being with us us. and helping us during confusing times. And thank you for loving us no matter what. Amen. Amen. And if you did the Advent wreath craft with us, make sure you put this flame on your second candle like we have on ours. Bye, bye. Bye. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the first chapter. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people. From their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son. And he named him Jesus. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. 
A couple years back, I came across a website named joyfulheart.com that takes various events in scripture and rephrases them from the viewpoint of the main character in that story. There happens to be one of those stories about what Joseph might have been thinking and feeling after he discovered that Mary was pregnant. And because there are times when others can say things a little better and give us a different kind of perspective, I thought I would share that story with you today on our second week in Advent. It is written by a man named Ralph Wilson, entitled Joseph's Letter Home, addressed to his mom. In it, he says, Dear Mom, we're still in Bethlehem, Mary and I and little Jesus. There were lots of things I couldn't talk to you about last summer. You wouldn't have believed me then, but maybe I can tell you now. I hope you can understand. You know, Mom, I've always loved Mary. You and Dad used to tease me about her when she was still a girl. She and her brothers used to play on our street. Our families got together for supper. But the hardest day of my life came scarcely a year ago, when I was 20 and she was only 15. You remember that day, don't you? The trouble started after we were betrothed and signed the marriage agreement at our engagement. That same spring, Mary left abruptly to visit her old cousin Elizabeth in Judea. She was gone three whole months. And after she got back, people started wondering out loud if she were pregnant. It was cloudy the day when I finally confronted her with the gossip. Mary, I asked at last, are you going to have a baby? Her clear brown eyes met mine, and she nodded. I didn't know what to say. Who, I finally stammered. Mary and I had never acted improperly, even after we were betrothed. Mary looked down. Joseph, she said, there's no way I can explain. You couldn't understand. But I want you to know that I've never cared for anyone but you. She got up and took my hands in hers, kissed each of them as if it were the last time she would ever do that again and turned towards home. She must have been dying inside. I knew I was. The rest of the day, I stumbled through my chores. It's a wonder I didn't hurt myself in the woodshop. At first, I was angry and pounded out my frustrations on the door frame I was making. My thoughts whirled so fast, I could hardly keep my mind on the work. At last, I decided just to end the marriage contract with a quiet divorce. I loved her too much to make a public scene. Couldn't talk to you or anyone, really, for that matter. I went to bed early and tried to sleep. Her words came to me over and over. I've never cared for anyone but you. How I wish I could believe her. I don't know when I finally fell asleep. But when I did, I had a dream from God. An angel of the Lord came to me. His words pulsated through my mind so intensely, I can remember them as if it were yesterday. Joseph, son of David, he thundered, Do not fear to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. I couldn't believe my ears. This was the answer. The angel continued, She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. The angel gripped my shoulders with his huge hands. For a long moment, his gaze pierced deep within me. Just as he turned to go, I think I saw a smile on his shining face. I bolted upright in bed. No sleep came after that. I tossed about for a while, going over the words in my head. Then I got up and dressed quietly so I wouldn't wake you. I must have walked for miles beneath the moonless sky. I got back just as the sun kissed the hilltops. I don't know if you can still recall that morning, Mom, but I can see it in my mind's eye as if it were yesterday. Sit down, I said to you. I've got to tell you something. Mom, I said, I'm going to bring Mary home as my wife. Can you help make a place for her? 
were silent a long time. You do know what they're saying, don't you? You said at last, your eyes glistening. Yes, ma'am, I know. You'd never believed me if I tried to explain, so I didn't. Unless the angel had also spoken to you, you'd have laughed me to scorn. This is the right thing to do, I said. After I left you, I went up the road to Mary's house and knocked. Her mother glared at me as she opened the door. Harshly, she called into the house. It's Joseph, almost spitting out my name as she said it. Mary came out, cringing, as if she expected me to give her the back of my hand, I suppose. Her eyes red and puffy. I just imagine what her parents said. Back your things, Mary, I told her gently. I'm taking you home to be my wife. She hugged me tight as she could. I didn't realize she was so strong. I told her what I'd been planning. We'll go to the rabbi's house this week and have him perform the ceremony. I knew it was awfully sudden, but I figured the sooner we got married, the better it would be for her and the baby and for me. Mary, even if our friends don't come, at least you and I can pledge our love before God, I said. I think my mom will be there. And maybe your friend Rebecca, if her mom and dad let her. How about your parents? I could feel her tiny frame shuddering as she sighed, or she sobbed quietly. Mary, I said, no matter what anyone says about you, I'm proud you're going to be my wife. I will take good care of you. I promised God that. She looked up and I lowered my voice. I had a dream last night, Mary. I saw an angel. I know. The anguish which had gripped her face vanished. She was radiant as we turned away from the house and began to walk up the hill together. Just then, her mother ran into the yard. Wait, she called. She must have been listening from behind the door. Tears were streaming down her face. I'll get your father, she called, almost giddy with emotion. We are going to have a wedding. That's how it was. Thanks for being there for us, Mom. I'll write again soon. Love, Joseph. Whether we consider that story or the story which comes directly from Scripture, no one could have blamed Joseph if he decided he didn't want to deal with the whispering voices or side glances about Mary's sudden pregnancy as he went about his business. In life as we know it, he was put in a very hard place. It would be easy to visualize him pacing back and forth, wrestling with his thoughts, trying to sort out those thoughts even, wondering what in the world was happening. To say he was confused over what was going on would be an understatement. And yet, he was another willing participant in the unfolding story of God's entry into humanity. He didn't understand everything that was happening, but he was still willing to say, Mary, I will indeed take you as my wife. I will love you and our child with my whole heart. Both of them probably had so many questions that were just begging to be asked, but most of them remained unspoken. All the explanation that was needed was that Mary was chosen to give birth to God's son, and Joseph was to put aside his fear and confusion about the unknown and follow through on the marriage plan. Things may have been clear as mud, as the saying goes, and yet together they ventured off down an unknown path. Usually when I think about being confused about something, it is because the situation seems to be unclear or I can't understand it. But sometimes, even if there are words that I know, I still like to look them up to see what the official definition might be. When I did that for confusion, I discovered that one alternate definition is a state of disorder, upheaval, tumult, or chaos. And maybe this helps to broaden the scope of our experience. Whether you have something that comes to mind for you that is unclear or something, Maybe some things 
that fall into the category of disorder, upheaval, tumult, or chaos. I think it's safe to say that we have all experienced confusion in one form or another. Because we don't have angels appearing in our homes or our dreams trying to explain things to us, though I wonder if that would actually make things more confusing, we are left with the question of what do we do when we wonder who, what, when, where, why, or how. Lately, I've been reminded over and over that sometimes the answer when facing things of the disordered or chaotic variety is simply to wait. Wait until things become clear. Live your life in the meantime. But wait to worry. Wait to celebrate. Wait to get frustrated until all of the pieces fall into place. And I think that is what ultimately happened for Mary and Joseph, with a bit of worry and wonder thrown in along the way. Last week, we heard the reminder to fear not, for God is present in all things, coming among us his precious children, bringing peace, comfort, and joy. I think the same applies this week as well, and really any time. In whatever we face, God remains with us. In our confusion, in our chaos, in our disordered lives, God is here among us, shining light into our darkness, giving us hope and patience in our waiting, promising that one day confusion will be gone. In the meantime, we continue to lift our prayers before God, surrounded by a community of faith, helping us to move forward as we seek out those good moments of comfort and joy. Nurture our faith as we discern and enact your mission. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, you set the stars in the sky and breathe life into the earth. Renew the face of creation where it is in need of your healing touch. Mend the wounds of environmental damage and restore balance to ecosystems so that all creation can declare your praise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Steadfast God, you never tire of seeking justice. Where people suffer from discrimination, judgment, and injustice, speak words of truth and comfort. 
Lead us toward a world where faithfulness and righteousness rain down from above. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Tender God, you know joy and sorrow alike. We pray for those in our families and congregation who are not joyful in this holiday season. Comfort those who grieve. Be a companion to all who are lonely. Tend to those who are sick or struggling with depression. And gather all people in your healing embrace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, we give thanks for the saints who have prepared your way in the wilderness and taught us to continue their faithful in their faithful steps. Make their generous lives an example for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. During these weeks of waiting and expecting, where people live in fear of the unknown, we pray for peace. Where people are confused about your will for their lives or for the world, we pray for clarity. Where people doubt your presence and your word, we pray for trust. Where people are curious and await the future with hopeful anticipation, we pray for wonder. Most of all, when the world longs for you, we pray you help us respond with glad tidings of comfort and joy. We raise our prayers to you, O God, in the name of the one who was, who is, and who is to come, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Generous God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer back to you, that through our gifts the world will receive your blessing. Holy God, beginning and the end, our salvation and our hope, we praise you for creating a world of order and beauty. When we brought on chaos, cruelty, and despair, you sent the prophets to proclaim your justice and mercy. At this end of the ages, your son Jesus came to bring us your love and to heal all of the suffering world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await his coming again in righteousness and peace. Send your spirit on us and on the bread and wine we share. Strengthen us in times of fear. Bring clarity to our confusion. Speak to our doubt. Increase in us a hopeful curiosity and bring to birth the justice and joy of your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This day, as you partake in Holy Communion, know that the body of Christ is given for you, and the blood of Christ is shed for you.
Let us pray. Generous and abundant God, you have done great things for us, and we rejoice. In simple gifts of bread and wine, you give us life forever. In your boundless mercy, strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now may the creator of the stars bless your advent waiting. The long-expected Savior fill you with love. And the unexpected Spirit guide your journey now and forever. Amen. As our worship concludes this day, may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you.